How bad is the Taliban? And when I ask how bad is the Taliban, I'm really asking how bad is Islamic law? Well, there's footage of an American military jet taking off from the Kabul airport, and people outside the jet are so desperate to get out of Afghanistan that they try clinging to the side of the jet as it takes off. These people would rather take their chances clinging to the side of a military jet than be under the control of the Taliban. There's also footage of these people plunging to their deaths after the plane took off. I'm not going to show that footage, but it is available on YouTube. For future reference, this is not Mission Impossible, where Tom Cruise clings to the side of a jet and then gets inside. Ladies and gentlemen of the world, if you hang on to the side of a jet as it's taking off, hoping to get wherever it's going, you're going to die. Even if you fall right after takeoff, you're still going to die because that jet will be moving at somewhere in the 150 to 200 miles per hour range and your bones are going to be shattered. And that's really the takeaway here. Given the choice between, on the one hand, living in a country governed by the Taliban and, on the other hand, plummeting to their deaths, there are people in Afghanistan who choose death. They would literally rather fall to their deaths than fall into the hands of the Taliban. In other words, they would rather die than face Islamic law because they experienced it 20 years ago. Ironically, the jet clingers are Muslims, and if you asked them if they want to live under Islamic law, they would say, yes, of course we do. Just like Muslims in the West say, because they don't know what's in their sources, and they assume that it's not what they see from the Taliban. Meanwhile, here in the U.S., if you say that there's any problem whatsoever with Islamic law, you're considered a racist, Islamophobic, hate-mongering bigot. We all know that Islamic law is violent, oppressive, misogynistic insanity derived from the ramblings of an illiterate 7th century Arabian caravan robber, but somehow our politicians and journalists and educators and entertainers have convinced themselves that they're noble and just and good and tolerant so long as they say the exact opposite. Can you imagine what it would be like for one of these Afghani jet clingers if he somehow managed to hold on to that jet until it landed somewhere else? Just imagine, he's so desperate to escape the Taliban that he clings for dear life to a U.S. military jet. That jet lands on some base. Then the poor Afghani jet clinger jumps on the side of another plane and holds on to that one all the way to the United States of America. He lands in the U.S. and he's instantly famous for being the man who flew halfway around the world by clinging to the sides of jets. Journalists run up to him and ask him, why did you do it? Why did you fly halfway around the world clinging to the sides of jets? The man says, I did it to get away from anything remotely resembling authentic Islamic law. The journalists, of course, would reply, what do you mean you wanted to get away from Islamic law. Islamic law is God's gift to politics and economics and morality. That and socialism, you freaking bigot, you Islamophobe, you racist. Why don't you grab onto another plane, this time to Germany, because you're a Nazi, you stupid Islamophobic racist Nazi. What do you know about Islamic law? All you did was get a taste of it 20 years ago, then grab the side of a plane when you heard it was coming back. Here I am, watching people die, falling off a jet just to get away from the morons in their country, and I almost want to grab the side of a jet just to get away from the morons in my country. This is a power of religion, there's a reason to it. Yeah? Yeah?